Hey traders, uh, it is January 6th evening after our homework. I figured since the world just ended in the stock market, facetiously speaking, uh, talking about this, I figured I'd give us a checkpoint on the Fang Gang and maybe Microsoft and Apple, you know, the big guys, maybe Tesla too. So figure out what acronym, Fang Mat, Fang Mat. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so um first the s p the market uh, bad day on wednesday a reaction to very mild comments that may have been misconstrued the comments were done weeks ago and we already knew about the outcome of those comments because the fed said so regardless bad debacle in the market today the sixth the day after the debacle meandered small caps up a little bit uh, you know a small bounce which is good why good because tomorrow morning we have to redo the fears of that and if nothing comes out new what the report if the jobs reports come out with an inline uh, we might have a relief pop just know that relief pops fade so if tomorrow the news is bad for the jobs meaning the jobs report is not too hot then the market might pop as a reaction is like whew that we've dodged that bullet so when it pops if that pop fixes my trades that I did three days ago that got shellacked yesterday, I get out and then reassess and then decide what to do. The pop should fade. If the pop takes out the highs, okay, you can chase it. But usually relief pops uh, fade. That's my experience. All right, so let's look at why I'm not freaking out. So this is the daily. Nothing on here that says bearish market. It's a dip like any other dip, start of one. Uh, what happens thereafter um, matters. So I'm just showing you that th Wednesday was just one bad day. And in fact, to not make you too comfortable, we have plenty of room to fall once we need to fall. Okay. All right. Back to the task at hand. So Facebook is the F thing. This is Facebook on a weekly basis. Gives you an idea that um, this blue-red is just a visual representation of a regression line. So, quote, the mean, reverting reverting to the mean. That's what it just did. They overshoot up, they overshoot down, they always revert to the mean, right? So I'll go, go down to a daily chart. From here, they have one failure, they have two failures. Um, lower than this one, not good, but it's an opportunity still. So if by any chance price takes out this in fact I'll do it right now I'll say uh, breakout from two fails daily so I know what time frame to look at the chart next time okay now conversely we have two bounces three bounces from the same level just below here so am I panicking on red days no because I know it's falling into support if this is lost this will say uh, this note says 285 so down here if this is lost however this is support until it fails so if it falls into here I will try to catch the falling knife what am I saying there's no urgency to panic out now if it bounces and comes back and fails from here there's a little head and shoulders right there so if it loses today's low which happens to be the low from the other day it could come down to 310 309 310 so that's a head and shoulders that could bring it to here technically, which is support. If that fails, comes down to here. Meanwhile, if nothing happens, it's probably going to meander here. How do I trade this? I will probably sell an iron condor on it or sell a put spread on a bad day. Uh, okay, so that it, do I have lines? Let's see. Do I have a lot? Ooh, I have a lot of lines. I think it won't make sense until I zoom in and then you'll see it. See, it's stuck in a range. This is a two hour, so this is December through now you can see how it's ping-ponging around the middle so nothing to see exuberance fear exuberance fear until they snap out of the range we'll go back to the daily we'll hide everything we'll go to uh, Amazon is the a in fang Amazon also stuck in a range for a longer period of time um, you can clearly see a head and shoulders in Amazon so it's at risk because it already lost the floor in it what do I mean so if you draw a line right there, you can see that it's below the line. 
So theoretically speaking, this is already broken down and it should scare us because the downside, the target of this is about here. What did Nick just say? Yes, <laughs> the this is a head and shoulders. You can see it here, one shoulder, one head, one shoulder. Well, it doesn't work always like that more often than you think. So it's not dead weight yet. So what they will try to do is bounce back into it. And if they bounce back into it successfully and get up to here, the danger is averted for now. It's a tall order, literally. That orange line, I did not draw. This is the heaviest point of volume for this whole period of time. Look at it. It's right there, that long bar. All these volume bars, these bars represent them, but they tell me at what price level they happen. Isn't that handy? It's called volume profile. Go study it. So the two biggest volume profiles are here and here. So now that we're below that, that's overhang. That's like a wall above us. Boom, boom. All these sellers and buyers are going to be busy here. So these two candles are a problem. It's going to take a lot of work from Amazon to do this. Maybe results from the holiday spending season. I don't know. Otherwise, this may be telling the market wants to breed. Good news, it has support here. It has support here a lot. So it shouldn't break down. They still have the opportunity to recover the neckline and get above it. I'm not going to share the lines because I know it's got a look. I'm, I know there's a lot of lines. Boom. You see that green thing? That's what that means. Okay. okay. Um, Netflix. Worse shape than Amazon. <laughs> look at this head and shoulders. Shoulder, giant head, shoulder, and look how far down below the neckline they are. That's the neckline right there. This is clearly a broken down stock on the chart. That's it. Not a company. Company's still good. So this says, I don't want to say how much, you know, technically it should be $100 at risk from here. So 480 is the target, even a little bit less. And look how well it matches up left. Look left. Wow. How does that work out? Let me see the lines. Okay. So these are manageable. Now, this is the opposite format inverse head and shoulders from here the target of that was this much higher so they overdid it on the way up this is the opposite formation as this one so you think it doesn't work i can guarantee you it does um that's this line i drew ahead of time and look how closely it, it trust me it's like self-fulfilling prophecies they work they they i can't tell you which way they're going to do, go but i can tell you once the line is crossed where it's going to go next likely okay is this the end of the world for Netflix? No, it has support where it's trying to hold. This candle right there is called a doji. I'll take my lines out. This candle is called a doji. It's indecision. They opened, they loved it, they hated it, they closed it exactly where it is. And it was a gap down. That was a strange day. The market didn't gap down today. I wonder what happened here. They must have had news. It was a flat day, but a terrible outcome after a very very bad day yesterday for the stock and the whole market okay so this one i would if it has another couple of bad days i would how do i trade it i would sell a put spread down here to try to make money out of fear look at all the support remember amazon i said it can't rally because it, it's going to have to rally through a lot of resistance this one too look look at all that volume waiting right above it that's a lot of action to battle through however look at all the volume it has below it that's a lot of support waiting for it all these buyers are lined up so as soon as it gets in here there's going to be buy 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 a lot of people interested in buying it of course there'd be selling too but the action will slow down the descent so if i sell a put spread here now i'm probably going to win if i sell a naked put to own shares i'm probably going to win odds are in my favor regardless of what the market does however bearish transition is happening google is the g in fang i use goog l not goog i i you should too um okay so google not an obvious head and shoulders by definition but an obvious loss of a neckline look at these hard line these tails rejection and then bounce hard bounce so they immediately defend it look at that defense nope 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 and then suddenly now they're below it so it's going to be a problem on the way back up. They can do it, but they're losing a neckline as well. Also, it has support. So it's not the end of the world. They can still right this ship. However, 
the bears have the upper hand for now. If I look on the 20, uh, 120, you can see how it's drifting lower on a shorter term, like October through now. It's drifting lower. If I go shorter in time, you can clearly see how every pop is being sold. Okay, if I go 30 minutes, that's uh, December 22nd and then now. So there's a lot of work to be done on the Goog. Apple um, needed to crash. <laughs> that rally was absolutely ridiculous and uh, unwarranted. So for a couple of weeks, I've been saying it needs to be under 170. 167 would have been perfect. And they finally pushed it down a couple of times. So the market makers may have fixed their problems. They were caught short and they needed a drop, violent drop. In fact, that was the truth for all markets, the SPX especially and the SPY. So they've had those. So now we can trade on base. Great company, it's falling into support. It's at 168. Better support anything at or below or near 161, this cluster. Uh, looking at the open interest for tomorrow, well, by the time you watch this video, it's probably already tomorrow. Today is 1-6, and I, I think I said that. Uh, jobs report tomorrow. The There is still downside pressure, but not necessarily needed to go there. But anyway, so Apple is not an obvious point of entry. The only way I would get long Apple here is by doing, actually, I wouldn't get long. I would sell an iron condor. I would sell call spread up here, put spread down here. I worked it out in the chat room today with somebody that suggested it, and I think they collected 60 cents. Uh, so if they did 10, they would collect $600. If Apple stays between, I forget the numbers, but I'm going to say 185 and 162, something like that, in the next couple of weeks. And that was an easy way to try to profit off of Apple. Microsoft is another beast. Same comments as Google. You can see the same line where they're losing support. They're one tick below support, eerily resembling Google. Check it out. See that? That's Google. That's Microsoft. What I like more about um, Microsoft is this is uh, this is Google. Look how it's like doesn't have a nice clean neckline. If I go to Microsoft, look, it's falling into a nice clean breakout line. So I think there will be buyers right here. It's too late to quote panic, but it is in potentially needs to re it needs to recover this neckline. This candle it was the breakout. They just filled the gap. Not every gap needs to, needs to fill, but that just makes people comfortable. What do I say here? Look for longs. Check it out. That's my note to myself. Look for longs. Um, and down here I will say long. So get off your butt, Nick. Go get long somehow. Okay, how do I get long? I sell a put on a bad day or I sell a put spread to profit from the range where I don't need a rally to win. You don't know what that is? Join it. Tesla. Tesla worked out perfectly to our charts. If you were with me in the chat room, you know what I'm talking about. Check it out. Okay, so I'm going to go to 240 and you'll see. This was drawn ahead of time. It played out almost exactly from the neckline perspective except they didn't dip they just broke out tested the neckline i had and then broke out faded and finished the job on a lower time frame now all that's happened in tesla can I, can i tell you that this is normal price action why it's falling it's it rallied this much a billion percent and then it's falling to uh give back half that's normal price action they rallied stuttered build the base finished the rally now they get back, came back to the base. Normal price action. They can still fall lower. It would still be fine. They have support here, support here. Somebody asked me, what's the best way of shorting Tesla? How about not shorting Tesla? How about going long Tesla on big dips? For some reason, people want to short Tesla. If you're shorting Tesla, you're shorting the market. It is much easier to short the market because Tesla is not going to fall on its own. It's a monster of a company. You don't trust me? Let me show you these. People who still have Bob Lutz's words in their mind, that's the guy that used to run GM who used to make fun of Tesla. I used to make fun of Tesla until I saw this number right there. Cash flow from its own operations, $6 billion. That's the blue number up there. They, don't, they no longer need to borrow to exist. This is different company. You want to see an impressive number? Okay, total revenues. Uh, 2017, heck, go to 2018, 22 billion in sales, 47 now. 
And you know what I know? The, the more impressive number, this guy right there, almost 11 billion. Okay, so Ford and GM, total sales is about a 135 to 145 billion. I don't know which, which is which. I think Ford has more, more revenues than, I can't remember. Anyway, they're both above 135 billion. They both have barely more gross profit than Tesla. So Tesla with 46 billion can generate 11 billion in gross profit where Ford has to, has um, 140 billion and they can generate maybe 18. That is an impressive feat for Tesla. Four, almost three and a half billion in, in net income. That is not the same company that you're shorting. It is a monster. Anyway, I'm not like a f fan, like an old fan of, I, I used to not like it, but this is not a shortable company. You can't short it just because Bob Lutz used to say. It's ridiculous. Okay, uh, I think we covered all of them. 15 minutes, that's longer than I wanted. Heck, you got, what is that? 60% of the NASDAQ? Later, gang.